With all the high inflation and rate hikes that we've been seeing over the past several months, I'm sure you've all heard about the threat of a recession looming around the corner. While the media often makes a big fuss about recessions, a recession is simply two consecutive quarters of GDP decline. In Western countries, this usually means a GDP contraction of 2-3% and this turns into international fear. But one notable region has not only been seeing a recession, but a full-on depression and the world has barely noticed. Macau's GDP is not down 5, 10, or even 20%. Macau's GDP is down an eye-watering 56.3%. If this was the US, we'd probably see negative interest rates and $20,000 stimulus checks. But China hasn't really done anything about it. In fact, China has only made things worse by cracking down on gambling. Hearing this, I don't think you'd be surprised to hear that Macau's casinos were already bleeding hundreds of millions per month throughout the past two years. Things have only gotten worse with the recent surge in COVID cases, which has resulted in all Macau casinos shutting down completely. And given that 80% of government revenue comes from casino taxes, there's no question that the entire region is on edge. So how much longer do we have until Macau's economy becomes unsalvageable? To gauge Macau's economic health, we first have to take a look into whether Macau can survive without gambling. Of course, they're extremely dependent on gambling right now, but can this be changed over the next several years? Well, according to many experts and casino owners, the answer is a resounding no. Professor Glenn McCartney from the University of Macau, for example, suggests the following. Given that we didn't diversify for 20 years, it isn't going to happen tomorrow. There's no quick fix. Similarly, a casino owner named Lawrence Ho says, As bad as it sounds, I don't think there's a future for just a pure non-gaming resort in Macau. The truth is, gaming is really the financial engine. Yes, you can have these great integrated resorts, but without the gaming component, the math doesn't work. Obviously, these are not the most reassuring of comments, but how did things even get so bad in the first place? Well, to answer this, we have to take a look at how Macau became the Asian Las Vegas in the first place. Taking a look back, the history of Macau's gambling routes stretch all the way back to 1557 when the Portuguese took over the region. At the time, the Chinese called the region Amagao, which means Bay of the Goddess of Sailors. The Portuguese adopted this name into Macau, and with that, they opened up the first European colony in East Asia. For the first 100 years, the region thrived as an international shipping hub. Macau was the perfect intermediary between Asia and the Western superpowers, but all of this would change in the early 1800s. You see, after the British won the 1814 Opium War against China, the British and the Dutch would take control of the trading routes between Europe and China. This made Macau basically irrelevant overnight. Macau still played a large role when it came to religion, housing refugees, and culture, but none of these factors helped the economy. Desperate for new modes of revenue, the Portuguese legalized a slew of activities in the 1840s, one of which was gambling. At the time, gambling was socially taboo across much of Asia, and it still very much is. Nonetheless, Macau was able to attract quite a few visitors. And by the end of the century, gambling became one of the top revenue sources for the region, but it still wasn't the dominant source. You see, most of the gambling houses that popped up throughout the first 100 years were pretty conservative. In other words, players actually had a decent chance of winning. Of course, the odds were still stacked in the casino's favor, but we saw odds of 55-45 or 60-40. This was good for gamblers' wallets, but it wasn't the best for Macau's bottom line. In 1962, however, all of this would change when Macau granted monopoly rights to all forms of gambling to a man named Stanley Ho. Stanley was a ruthless businessman who saw insane opportunity in Macau. He didn't hesitate to bring in Western games that were far more predatory. He also invested significant amounts of money into developing the maritime routes between mainland Asia and Macau, which made the region more accessible than ever. And before you knew it, Macau would become the Las Vegas of Asia. While Macau's economic problems were finally being solved, Portugal soon had to deal with the Cultural Revolution, aka the Communist Revolution of China. Portugal saw loads of uprisings across Macau, and while they tried to control these using soldiers, the distance between Macau and Portugal made this quite difficult. Soon enough, Portugal would find themselves asking for China's help in controlling the region. Eventually, this would result in them turning over the entire region to China in 1999, and that's how the Macau that we know today was created. 
One of the biggest economic threats for Macau is China. While China has yet to outright ban gambling in Macau, it's no secret that China is strongly against gambling. Ever since the Communist Party took over in 1949, gambling has been illegal in China. This includes overseas gambling as well, but in practice, China doesn't generally prosecute gambling. Instead, they prefer to take another approach. They try to make gambling as inaccessible as possible. For example, the process of getting a visa to Macau is extremely difficult for everyday citizens. This is one of the reasons that Macau is so lucrative. Only rich Asians are actually able to go there. During regular times, Macau attracts 22 million gamblers per year while Las Vegas attracts 25 million gamblers. Despite having fewer gamblers, Macau averages $28 billion in gambling revenue while Las Vegas only averages $11.1 billion. Clearly, China's visa policies haven't hurt Macau's top line all that much, but this isn't to say that Macau is free from China's control. If anything, China has been more controlling than ever as Beijing has launched a full-on gambling crackdown. For example, they've been implementing facial recognition software in Macau's ATMs and reducing withdrawal limits. They've even been considering a digital currency to better track money trails to casinos. But why is the CCP doing all of this right now? Casinos are already getting crushed by the pandemic, so why make it even harder for them? Well, the answer is that the CCP is worried about losing control. Ever since the 1970s, China has become more and more capitalistic, and one of the best examples of this is the toleration of Macau. But they've started to feel that they've given companies and businessmen way too much power and influence. And the event that made this abundantly clear to them was Jack Ma's infamous speech in late 2020. If you're not familiar with Jack Ma, he's the founder of Alibaba and the Ant Group. And he used to be the richest person in China until he got on their bad side. You see, in late 2020, he gave a speech in which he criticized the CCP. He even started the speech with a disclaimer that he's probably wrong, but the CCP didn't care all that much about his little disclaimer. Jack Ma would go missing for the next three months, and ever since then, Jack Ma has been in the process of handing over his entire fortune to the CCP. In fact, as I'm writing this script, it was just announced that Jack Ma will cede control of the Ant Group to the CCP. Aside from destroying Jack, the CCP has decided to crack down on capitalism as a whole, which of course includes Macau. The recent casino shutdowns are likely a side effect of this. The last time China shut down casinos was at the beginning of the pandemic in February 2020 when fears were at all-time highs. But even then, they only shut them down for 15 days. This time, however, casinos have already been closed for three weeks. Is this a mere coincidence or is the CCP trying to show Macau who's in control? I'll let you be the judge of that. Even if Macau survives all these crackdowns and shutdowns, they still have a massive timer looming over their heads. You see, when China took over Macau in 1999, they only agreed to give Macau autonomy for 50 years. Macau falls under China's one country, two systems policy just like Hong Kong. The policy states that these regions are politically part of mainland China. However, they have the freedom to operate under a different economic system for a set period of time. These regions are supposed to use this time to morph to China's ideals before they unite economic systems. But given the current state of Macau, they haven't really made any progress in this realm. Macau is literally almost three times as dependent on gambling as Las Vegas, and this is after 23 years of morphing time. Clearly, Macau does not have any intention of changing, but it looks like China might have different plans. According to the initial agreement, Macau will become one with China in 2049, which means that gambling will become illegal. However, the general consensus has been that China won't actually do anything after 2049. The reasoning is that Macau is simply so popular and profitable that it doesn't make any sense to shut it down and ruin the region. But it looks like China is moving to decouple Macau from gambling. According to Win Macau chairman Alan Zeman, what Beijing wants is to have a lot more non-gaming facilities. And it seems like they're planning on leveraging the upcoming gambling license renewal at the end of this year as a negotiating chip. Honestly, there's no way these licenses don't get renewed. But it looks like the CCP wants certain policies in place in return. First, the CCP wants Macau to create a special non-gaming zone. This zone will be dedicated to tech manufacturing, tourism, medicine, conventions, and sports. Secondly, the CCP wants shorter gambling licenses. Right now, licenses last 20 years and renewals have to be made every 5 years after that. Moving forward, however, the CCP wants 10-year licenses followed by 3-year renewal periods. 
China also wants reform regarding high-risk gambling. For example, uh, they want to reduce the number of slot machines each casino can own. All these reforms are designed to move Macau away from gambling. But by the looks of the Macau economy right now, things aren't progressing all that well. And that brings us to where we are today. Looking forward, the state of Macau will really be dependent on what casinos decide to do. How long will they be willing to put up with Chinese politics before they decide to leave Macau? Under normal circumstances, this would be the last thing they'd want to do given how profitable Macau is. However, most casinos are already hurting quite a bit. Wynn Resorts, for example, hasn't had a single profitable quarter since the start of the pandemic. Fortunately, they still have quite a bit of cash on hand. But if it does come to shutting down a casino and scaling back, Macau may very well be the victim. While Macau is often the most profitable, they're also the most risky and uncertain. So when you're scaling back, you probably want to stick to areas that are more stable and reliable like Las Vegas. Fortunately, we haven't gotten to this point yet. But if China continues to let Macau's economy get destroyed, this may very well become a possibility. And if casinos start leaving Macau, it won't be long till Macau goes bankrupt. So it's in their best interest to keep casinos around. And honestly, it's in China's best interest to keep Macau around. But who knows, their interest for control may be greater than their interest for preserving Macau. Do you guys think Macau will survive China? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you hope that Taiwan survives China. And of course, consider checking out our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.